Hi everybody, this is James Campbell, and in these videos, I'm gonna go over the core concepts of great expectations so you can understand the library better and how we can work with it. The key idea, of course, is the expectation. An expectation is an assertion about data. So we need expectations and data together. When we have those things, we can produce validations. Validations unlock profiling. Profiling lets us get a better picture of our data. And with those things together, we have data docs. Data docs make it possible to describe and share information about your data to the rest of your team. A data context is the core concept of great expectations that brings these ideas together. And finally, validation actions make it possible to interact with the rest of your team. Okay, so let's dive into these things in a little bit more detail. First, expectations. Expectations start with the idea of the expectation itself. That's a declarative sentence that a computer can evaluate, but a human can understand. So something like expect column to exist, expect column values to be unique, or expect the column min to be between. Next is the expectation configuration. The configuration parameterizes the expectation and makes it specific for real data. Like the column that we're talking about is the age column and the minimum value is 18. When we have all of those things we can start collecting them into an expectation suite. The expectation suite collects a bunch of expectations together to describe data. And we might have then, for example, the users table that we're describing based on all of those expectations together. Okay, so let's take a look at validations. The thing that makes validations possible is the data asset. The data asset can connects to expectation configurations, to data sources, and produces expectation validation results. When we have a bunch of those together, just like the expectation suite, it's an expectation suite validation result. Okay, so how do we get the batch of data into a data asset that we need to validate? Well, we call that concept the data source. The data source is a connection to a compute environment like a pandas or SQL database, as well as to a data source like S3 or some other kind of a bucket. The data source produces a batch of data. We describe a batch of data using batch quarks and markers can make it uh, precise about which specific batch of data there is. And there's also a concept called the batch quarks generator or just generator, which makes it easier to build batch quarks based on logical concepts like a partition. Okay, so let's take a, a little bit of a deeper look into profiling. Profiling uses a profiler. A profiler can be configured or extended, and you can think of it as producing a stub expectation suite or uh, even encoding specific logic from your team if you've got some convention. Um, expectations can also produce metrics that the profiler uses to produce even more precise expectation suites. Okay, so let's flip over now and look at Datadocs. Datadocs uses an expectation suite renderer to produce a prescriptive description of what should be in your data. So uh, the column values should be unique, for example. And then also validation renderers, which compare what we observed to what we expected. So we might say column values should be unique in our expectation suite renderer and the validation renderer, which could be styled or customized as however you would like, might say that we expected the columns to be unique, but in fact, there were duplicate values. Okay, so the key thing about the data context is the configuration. It is a YAML file that you can share with your team, store in your version control system that keeps track of things like data source connection info, store info, I'll talk about that in a little bit more, customized plugins or extensions to great expectations. And you can use that configuration to create a data context. Well, that then allows you to have an expectation store, validation store, metric store, valuation parameter store, all those things that standardize the way that you can keep track of and access great expectations resources. Finally, validation actions. Validation actions take advantage of all the things that we've talked about already and then make it possible for great expectations to interact more easily with things outside of it. So for example, to store the results from validation, update documentation, use evaluation parameters, or send a notification to your team based on validation results. Thanks again for taking the time to learn about these concepts of great expectations. We're still really actively developing the library, so welcome your feedback and contributions, and excited to hear about what you expect from your data.